One could, well, knowing the strength of the steel, which is about 60,000 pounds per square inch under tension, uh, one could actually calculate the strength of the device, but uh, uh, I didn't uh, go to that much bother. All right. Because the... Um, uh, the thing I was primarily, I, I had the intuitive uh, opinion that this would be plenty strong enough. Then the question is, how much weight do I want to put up there? Ah. And all of this, of course, weighs a considerable amount. So, from that point of view, where I could get away with quarter inch was better than three eighths inch, and uh, so uh, the the stresses in sailing, um, of course, uh, come from canvas or some similar material, and. Uh, uh, you, you know that the pull of the sail has to be communicated to the vessel. Now, that indicates somewhat the uh, strength of the uh, structures that hold the sail on the one hand and communicate the stresses from the uh, sail to the vessel itself. Well, then the question is, well, what, what are the forces that act when you're pulling the vessel through the water? Water. Well, there's the compression on the bottom of the mast, and that is equal to the weather shrouds mm -hmm. tension onto the hull. Right. Um, you can get. You can start by figuring what kind of propulsion engine style you would have to have to get satisfactory results with your vessel. Well, uh, if you are going to install, let us say, a, a system like that one, um, you might want to put uh, Oh, 30 horsepower or 40 horsepower into the thing, and um, you would know if you did a little paperwork how much push you could get uh, or expect. Now then, you can say, okay, I've got to have the same amount of force from the sails. And uh, so, you know, then the pressure against the, or you can look it up uh, in a reference to sail, and uh, calculate the force on the, on the, um, uh, well, it would, let's see, with a, it would, you'd have to run a different kind of calculation for the fore and afters on the one hand and the squirrels on the other. Yeah, there's some side forces to overcome. But in that way, you could uh, finally arrive at a rough calculation of what force would be required on a fitting like this one, for instance. Well, you can see what the surface area of the weld is. You know that the weld metal has about the same strength as the rest of it, uh, and you can call it 60,000 pounds per square inch and calculate the strength of the weld. Uh, and of course, it's, there's no necessity in having uh, a stronger band than the strength of the welds. And uh, so with shoving the figures back and forth that way, uh, I convinced myself that this is plenty strong. <laughs>
Well, that's that's a good way to look at it. Well, I'll talk to Jorgen and see what um, his take on that, because um, I was under the impression we were going to be using three eighths inch um, and not the uh, the quarter. But I suspect that that's rather heavier than you need. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you I can, can do save some a lot numbers. Of up a loft if you use yeah. a somewhat lighter steel. The um, now when I did the calculations for my rigging, I um, figured that I would uh, encounter winds up to a uh, uh, hundred knots, but. Under those conditions, I'd have the vessel laid over, and um, so the actual force applied it's would be the uh, multiplied by the sine or the cosine, depending on how you look at it. And uh, then um, I calculated the healing forces and. Uh, on, in terms of the healing forces I uh, that I wanted or expected, I calculated the ballast that I required. Well, uh, ultimately the amount of ballast limits the amount of force that you're going to have applied to the rigging in any given condition. The writing arm? Hmm? The writing arm, essentially? Yes, right. Yeah, I was... Um told that the writing arm for my vessel is 1.2 at uh, 20 degrees heel and that um, 103,000 times 1.2 is roughly 120 um, 5,000 pounds and then uh, divided that by half the beam for the oh, mm -hmm. the arm length and then that came out to um, roughly what was that it was just under 15,000 pounds and so then we had uh, actually it was a five I forget but then we multiplied by three safety factor of three was um, about five-eighths inch wire was satisfactory for that so even though I have six shrouds um, on each side of the vessel mm -hmm. each shroud is strong enough to withstand three times the maximum writing moment because they said that it's a dynamic force, and you don't know which one of those is going to ever have to take the well, whole load. Well, there's that. But, uh, right. And, of course, uh, the vessel itself is not moving um, in any determinate direction during a uh, blow because you'll be going up and down <laughs> as well as side to side. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, ultimately, uh, the best you can do is to say, well, how much uh, ballast do I want to put on this thing, and how how uh, how much wind am I going to put up with before I get down some sail? Yeah. And uh, so. Uh, Ultimately, these numbers are not uh, very determinate, but it's a good idea to run them yeah. and uh, calculate, let us say, a uh, three to one safety factor and and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks a lot. But in uh, uh, in practice, one gets. I suppose uh, uh, accustomed to how much uh, thickness, how much width, uh, how many bolts, and that sort of thing. And um, if it looks right, it probably is. <laughs> I've heard that before.